Let's begin with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful. Light the fire of your love in them. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We are in ordinary time now. Remember, after the Christmas season ended, we moved into ordinary time. So what color was the priest's chasuble on Sunday? Green. The color of the priest's chasuble can remind us where we are on the church calendar. At Mass this weekend, the Gospel reading was from the Gospel of Luke. We'll read the story that the priest read from the Gospel on Sunday. It is in the Children's Bulletin. Before we read the story, let's remember what had happened before the events in this story. When Jesus was about 30 years old, he was baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist, the man who kept telling people, Repent! Prepare the way of the Lord! We looked at paintings that showed Jesus being baptized. Then we learned that after Jesus was baptized, he performed his first miracle. He turned water into wine at the wedding in Cana after his mother asked him to help. Jesus had not planned to perform a miracle, but his mother Mary asked for his help. After that, he began preaching around the countryside to people who would listen. Then he returned to Nazareth, the village where he had grown up. He was 30 years old. He was a Jewish man. Jewish people go to synagogue on the Sabbath day. Catholics go to church on the Sabbath day. Every week, Jewish people have certain readings that they read from the Hebrew Bible, what we call the Old Testament, the Bible before the time of Jesus. On that day, one of the readings was from the book of Isaiah. It was written by a prophet about 700 years before Jesus was born. In that time, the written word was saved on scrolls, not in books. Scrolls would be like this. A scroll was a long, long piece of paper that would be written on. Then the two ends of the long strip of paper would be rolled together towards each other. The scrolls would be saved in special places to be protected and preserved. Most people in that time could not read, not even grown-ups, but Jesus could read. So there he was in the synagogue in Nazareth on that day, back in the town where he had grown up, and he read from the religious scroll. Now we're going to read the gospel story from the children's bulletin. There are some little puzzles along the way. Jesus returns to Nazareth. Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue. Jesus stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Jesus read from the book of Isaiah. 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release for the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Everyone watched Jesus. Jesus said to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Instead of leaving you wondering about the next part of the story, waiting until next week, we'll watch a short video that tells the story, and it tells you what happened next. Maybe not quite what you would expect. Jesus said something that angered the people in his old hometown. They chased him to a cliff to push him off the cliff and kill him. He managed to get away. He did not return to Nazareth. Below this video, there is a link to the video that tells the story. There are not as many paintings about the time Jesus preached in the synagogue in Nazareth as there are about the time when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River or the time when Jesus turned water into wine at the wedding in Cana. But there are a few paintings about Jesus' preaching in Nazareth. There are three that we can look at. The first is a fresco that is in a monastery in a country called Kosovo. The monastery was built almost 700 years ago. That was so long ago that it was before Europeans even knew about North America and South America. If you Look at the picture, you see Jesus standing and reading what looks like a book. And the Bible clearly says he read a scroll, but I guess the artist didn't read the Bible quite so closely. I don't know the name of the artist. It is a painting that is inside a church painted on a wall. There are many, many paintings on the inside of this monastery, this church building. The paintings are what are called frescoes. That means the artist painted on wet plaster. Imagine wet clay and you smear the wet clay onto a wall and then you paint on that wet clay and then it dries and there's a painting. That might help you to understand what a fresco is. And if you look at that painting, you see Jesus standing in the middle and Four men on the left and three men on the right. You can look and enjoy. The next painting 
was painted about 370 years ago, before the United States even existed. The artist's name was Gerbrand Vanden Eckhout. He was from a country called the Netherlands, which is across the Atlantic Ocean in Europe. He was a student of the artist Rembrandt. Rembrandt kind of liked m much of his picture to be dark with a certain part of it to be light. And if you look at this painting, Jesus is sitting in the center and the light is around him and the people closest to him. In the synagogue, when somebody would read from the scroll, the person would stand. After the person had read the scroll, the person would sit down and talk. And it looks as if in this painting, Jesus is sitting down and talking to people. And you can look and see the tiny details that interest you in the painting. The next painting was painted about 150 years ago. The artist grew up in Russia. His name was Nikolai Guy. If you look at the painting, by the time of this painting, it appears as if Jesus had finished reading from the scroll and looks as if he was getting ready to walk out of the synagogue and some people are coming up to him and talking to him. I'm not sure what's happening in the painting, but it looks as if a man with a very long beard and a light colored coat or cape has come up to Jesus to say something to Jesus. Look at the painting and try to understand what the artist wanted to tell you. The name of the painting is Christ in the Synagogue. And the painter said that it was a painting about the day when Jesus was in the synagogue in Nazareth. This is an unusual painting, and you might want to look at it to try to figure out what the artist was trying to say. This week we'll do lesson one. It begins on page 19. The lesson is called, How Do We Know God? So let's turn to page 19. At the very bottom of the page it says, Everything God created is good. That's from the first book of Timothy in the Bible. 
Okay, we're on page 19 now. How do we know God? Do you know why you are learning about your Catholic faith? Your family wants you to know God. God made us. God loves us. He knows you and every person by name. God wants us to know and love him too. How do we know God? He gave us many ways to know him. The Bible and the church tell us about God's love. Jesus shows us the most how much God loves us. Turn the page. Page 20. God always loves us. God made the whole world. God made every person in the world. God made you, too. Everything God made tells us about his love. God made people to share in his love. God knows everything about us. God knows when we are happy or sad. God cares about us when we are sick. God promises to love us forever. God loves us always, no matter what. God wants us to love him too. Next page, page 21. The Bible tells us about God's love. God wants all people to know about his love for us. One way God tells us about his love is in the Bible. The Bible is the church's holy book of God's word. The Bible was written by people very long ago, but the Bible is God's own word to us. God inspired the people who wrote it. Through their writing, he shared what he wants us to know about him. The Bible teaches us about God's love. We read the Bible to learn more about God. At the bottom of page 21, there's a little activity you can do. You can draw a picture. Who teaches you about God? Draw a picture of one person who teaches you about God. And when you get done there, you can turn the page. You can come back and color the picture later if you'd like. Page 22. The very top of the page says, God the Father sent his Son, Jesus. We pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that God the Father sent his Son, Jesus, to us. Jesus showed us how much God loves us. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is God also. And Jesus loves us. The Bible tells us many things about Jesus. Jesus taught his followers how to pray. He helped and healed people. He showed love for all people. Next page, page 23. Jesus is God the Son. God the Son was born to Mary in Bethlehem and was named Jesus. He is and always was and always will be God. But he also is truly man. Everything Jesus said or did showed his love for us. Next page. Page 24. The top of the page says, The church is the family of God. Jesus is a part of our lives, just like our family and friends. Jesus is with us all the time. Jesus is with us in a very special way in the church. The church is all the people who are baptized in the name of the Blessed Trinity and who are part of the body of Christ. We become members of the church at baptism. 
God calls us to gather to be his people, the church. The word of God and the Eucharist give the church life. The church is also called the body of Christ. The church is like a family that wants to know and love God together. The church is the family of God. Jesus is the head of that family. And Jesus is always with the church. Jesus gave us the church to tell us about and share his love for us. The church also helps us share the love of the Blessed Trinity with others. We are blessed to be part of the church. At the bottom of the page, there's an activity. The church is like a family. Draw a picture of your family. And then you can tell somebody about your drawing. You can draw the picture later if you like. And then on page 25, there are some questions to make sure you learned what you were supposed to learn in this lesson. Who is the Son of God? Jesus is the Son of God. What is the Bible? The Bible is God's Word. And then it shows the word church. And you can trace the word. C-H-U-R-C-H. -H. Jesus is always with us. And Jesus is with us in a special way in the church. Turn the page. Stories help us to learn. Some stories are make-believe and other stories are real. They tell us about things that really happened. The Bible is a book that tells us about things that really happened a long time ago. The most important part of the book is called the Gospels. The Gospels tell us the good news about Jesus. The Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The book of Matthew, the book of Mark, the book of Luke, and the book of John. Your textbook has a little paragraph about St. Francis of Assisi. He is mentioned in this lesson because he loved all of God's creation. There is more to St. Francis's story than that little paragraph tells you. There is a coloring page for St. Francis included in the stack of saints pages that you have. Francis was born about 940 years ago. He was born into a wealthy family. When he was about 25 years old, he believed he heard a message from God telling him to repair the church. Francis thought that meant to repair the church building that he was then standing inside. So he rebuilt that church. Then he finally understood that he should work to rebuild the whole Catholic church, not just a building, but the church itself. Francis began preaching and began going directly to any priest who was doing bad things. Francis chose to live in poverty, and he would preach to anyone, even animals and birds. Francis was a deacon, but he was never a priest. He tried to imitate Jesus and to carry out Jesus' work. Time to say goodbye. We'll begin with the Our Father. You know the words, and you can read them as we all say them. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, please defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke the devil, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Bye-bye. I'll see you next week.